What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today's video is all about creating a double exposure inside of an animal. We're going to use a hypothetical situation where we're designing an idea or a movie poster for a documentary that is all about polar bears. I picked a cute and cuddly polar bear because I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people and sell some tickets. But if you're at home and you're following along, you can pick whatever animal you want. It could be the family's pet dog, cat, it could be a horse, it could be pretty much anything because this is a technique that can be used in a lot of different applications. However, I'm gonna advise that you follow along from beginning to the end because at the end, I'm gonna show you how to color grade and use a camera raw filter in order to bring the whole entire composition together and give it those final finishing touches. So without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's get that Photoshop fired on up and the tutorial going. First things first, this is a movie poster scenario where we are designing a movie poster for a documentary about polar bears in the Arctic. Or use your imagination, it could be pretty much for anything. The idea is that we want that double exposure to look amazing, the design to look nice and tasty, and of course, uh, make sure that we please the client. What I'm gonna do first is explain what kind of assets we will be using. I did go ahead and pick out some photography. Obviously we have a polar bear, the star of the show, and this one is cute as can be, which always helps to sell a movie. And then of course we have our mountains. So I picked a couple different mountain ranges. I don't know if we're gonna use them all, but better to have more than less sometimes when you're designing. And then of course uh, I have some of these eagles flying that will add a little bit of depth, which you will see in the near future. I do want to mention I picked these assets slash photography up at Envato.com, which is a great place to get a subscription because they have stock photography, graphics, plugins, and other textures. You name it, they probably got it. And their stuff has a commercial license. So if you are doing commercial work, it's a great place to get your stock footage from and save money because the subscription is only a couple hundred bucks a year and you got a lot to work. Check out that link below and if you do use it we do get a small referral slash commission whatever you want to call it so that helps out the channel and we really appreciate it if you do use that link so thanks so much back to the show we're gonna have to get the monotonous work out of the way so what i'm gonna do is just mask out all of our images the polar bear mountain ranges and then on these flying eagles, we're not going to mask out because we're just gonna use a blending mode for that later, just to save time. Sit back, relax, I'll be max masking out. All right, everything is masked out, ready to go. I did things a little on the quicker side because towards the end of creating this piece of artwork, I'll go ahead and clean up the edges and maybe add some flyaways, some flyaway fur <laughs> to our little baby polar bear. So for now, let's go ahead and turn our polar bear into a group. And then on that group, we're gonna add a mask. So make sure you're on the polar bear or whatever animal you're using for this project. Hit Command G. That's gonna allow us to have a group. And then we're gonna just gonna name it bear, B-E-A-R. And then on that, we're going to add, go down to the Japanese flag icon and add a mask. And then on the mask, we are now able to paint with black and have the image disappear like so. And that's going to allow us to create the double exposure, have our mountain ranges creep in the image itself. Now these mountain ranges, we're gonna wanna put below the bear as a bottom layer right above the background. Actually, an easy way to do that is to hit Command bracket back and then that'll automatically drop these down for you. So command back bracket and now our mountain ranges are behind the image and we can get started on placing them strategically to kind of mimic the back of the bear itself. So let's see what these start to look like 
and I'm gonna Command T, transform. Whoops, there's a little spot that I forgot to mask out. Let me get that really quick. All right, made those little adjustments, fixes, and now we can start playing around with the mountains to figure out which one is gonna go where. So one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the light matches on each mountain. So on this mountain, this one right here, you can see the lights coming in from this direction, but on this one, it's the opposite. We have shadows being created on that side. So I'm gonna hit Command T and then flip horizontal by right clicking. And now we have light hopefully being matched. Yeah, so see the shadows over here. Now it makes a little more sense. And then let's just take a look at that other one too, this one here. So these ones are kind of, it was overcast or whatever. So there's not a whole lot of shadow, but they're definitely shadows towards this side. So let's just flip this one as well. It's not gonna be a big deal on this one, but just for the sake of the tutorial. There we go. So now I'm just looking at these pieces of mountain. I think this one's gonna look good, kind of in the middle, cause it has a, top, a really high peak. And then this one, and this one can kind of go in the front. We might not even need that one, but let's just play with these guys here for, for now. And so now we're gonna go up to the bear and with a soft round brush, with a flow of around 4%, we're just going to paint with black on the mask and just start to disappear some of the image. Let's go ahead and group each one of these mountain ranges into its own group. So click on each layer, hit Command G, and then go back down to the Japanese flag icon, hit that, and now we have a mask ready for each one and we can start to mask and play around with where we want the edges to start. So do the same thing on the bottom one, Command G, and then we're gonna hit the mask icon. And then one more time for that last one, hit the mask icon. And now we have masks ready to go without damaging the mask that we already created. So this is one way to go about working non-destructively and wasting time if you had to go back and mask out something. So we have our first little layer here. I'm just going to follow the, the head area and get rid of this piece here by just painting that out. I'm gonna increase the flow to do this quicker. And then we just want it to follow the head. And then over here, same thing. We just wanna kind of have it disappear here like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the next mountain. Get rid of that so that it kind of ties into that other mountain range. And don't worry about the colors because we're gonna color grade everything at the end and make it look like it belongs together. So I'm just rounding out all the edges and the corners. And then let's just see what we can do with this last one, even though we don't, we didn't know if we were gonna need it or not. Maybe we can. And then let's just look at this last little piece and you can move these around too. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to finesse everything with the bear so we can start to paint back with your brush some of the bear so that it kind of goes in and out, turns into another subjective situation of how much bear you want to show through and how much you don't want. You want to have a really nice subtle transition between the photography in the back and the bear itself. So sometimes maybe that ear is going to look good or maybe it's not. You just got to kind of figure out what works and doesn't work. All right, something like that. And then let's just see what this background is gonna look like if we have it nice and white or some a little bit of gray in it. And now I think we can just go ahead and add some quick and easy shadows down below just to kind of ground our bear. So let's just do a new layer, drop that below everything right above the background group. And this is just down and dirty. I'm going to just be painting. Actually, let's just pick a shadow color here and then just drop it down a little darker. So with your color picker, pick something dark on the bear or whatever you're working with. And then we're just going to paint subtly like so. And then create a new layer. And we're just gonna do a little bit of a shadow for the head. And then on that part, we're just going to go up to filter and add a little blur, Gaussian blur like that. And then hit Command T, transform. And we just go up to perspective and just kind of perspective it out a little bit to flatten it like that. You know, that's good enough. And the same thing with our bottom layer, just add a little blur, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, hit OK, Command T. And we can just use a little perspective, right click just to bring it out a little, bring it down. And then it's a little dark, so you can add a mask on that, paint with black. Now it's really down and dirty. I'd spend way more time on that, but and now I'm gonna go back up to the bear. I'm just going to go on that same mask, the grouping mask, and just clean up these edges a little bit with the, just with a brush. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just get rid of the, there's a little too much light on there, so it doesn't make sense. So let's just clean these out, painting with black. 
All right, and then from here, let's go ahead and get the color going. Easy way to blend this all together so it makes sense is to create a whole new grouping. We're gonna call this effect. So go to new layer, command G, name it effects to stay organized. And then from here, we're gonna use a gradient map. Immediately, you can see that it blended all together, makes it a little more graphic. Since this is, we're dealing with the Arctic, I wanna work with our blues and one of the gradient maps that I resort to quite a bit are in the legacy gradients and their preset and photographic toning usually helps out a lot because they have, I don't know, just the, the toning on these are good for a lot of different projects. So go down to whichever one you wanna use, probably something a little on the bluer side, but you can just start going through them to see kind of what works. And I like that one, that one's pretty classy. I got a little carried away with the tutorial and I forgot to ask you to hit that like button. If you're enjoying this video and learning a ton, hit the like button now. I really appreciate it. It makes us feel like we're doing something right. Keep that one. And then on right below that layer, we can get rid of this layer now, but right below that one, let's just go ahead and hit up exposure in your adjustment layer, drop it below. And then let's just add a little bit of, I think we need a little bit of darkness and just create a little bit of shadow in certain areas. The quick and easy way is just to paint them in, invert the mask on your exposure, drop the exposure down like you probably just saw me. I'm sorry, we're going a little fast here. So dropping the exposure down, inverting the mask with Command I, and now I'm gonna paint back using a white brush, soft round brush, with a low flow of 4%. And I just wanna kind of paint in here and over here and down here just to kind of give us a little bit more dimension. And if it's a little strong, you can go up to the opacity on that layer and just drop it down a little bit. One thing we wanna do is make sure that we're not hitting the outside edges. So let's actually turn this into a clipping mask. So we're gonna drop this down back on our art folder and then hit on top of the bear, we're gonna hit Command Option G, and that's gonna keep everything confined to our subject. We should have done that from the beginning, but you know, it's kind of a trial and error. And then the same thing, I wanna go just above the art, and we're gonna do one more clipping mask to add some highlights to our mountains. Go ahead and hit Exposure, bring it right above the art folder, Option Command G. Actually make sure that it's right above it and not in the other group, so hit Command Back Bracket, and then Option Command G, and then on your Exposure, just pump it up something bright and then it doesn't matter because we're gonna invert the mask command I and then paint some of these highlights back in with a white brush on a low flow of around 4%. Make sure you're painting with white and then let's just go in and see if this does anything for us. It's gonna be pretty subtle and depending on what mountain ranges you use, you might want to really go in and do a little bit better of a job. Like I want these to pop a little more, so I'm gonna do one more exposure adjustment layers, and these are gonna be pretty hardcore. And Option Command G, same thing, pumping that exposure up considerably like that. And then I'm gonna hit Command I on the mask, invert it, and then I'm just, I just want these peaks here in the front to be a little more drastic with the light. You can see some of the mistakes that I've made that I probably want to mask this out a little better. Same thing right here. So I'm just going to do that. One other thing is we want to add our birds. And so go up to your birds. We can actually put this right above the art so that the highlights are not affecting that. And then we're just going to go to blending mode, see which one is going to work with the least amount of work. It's going to blur out the background. So just go to darken. And then we're going to mask this out really easily with the lasso tool, just lasso around the birds and then hit your mask icon. You can see that we kind of have a little bit of that peeking through. So we might have to do a little bit more adjust but for now, let's just see where these are going to look good. So I'm going to hit Command T and then short or make them smaller with Shift Option to make sure that we keep the size. And then I'm going to make one more copy, Command J, bring them over and then make these guys really small so that they're in the background. Command J, one more layer and make that even smaller. And we just have these birds kind of, and you just place them where you kind of feel like they're going to look good. Go back down to, to this layer here, really quickly brush away with black that edging like so, and then that saves us time. And we're gonna do the same thing with the birds further away, just kind of brush them away. And this is just quick and dirty. And it's okay if you hit the birds a little bit because they're so far away, they're supposed to be blurry. And then you wanna paint over the birds just a little bit so that it blurs them out. And then the same thing with our birds up here, our bigger birds, we can just kind of brush over them. That, maybe just raise them up a little and then go back in and brush out the edges. Maybe get rid of that one because it's kind of not making sense. So we're just gonna lasso that one out. And the last thing, or one of the last things 
Well, I mean, we could. I'd spend way more time on this if this was a real project and just kind of tweak the colors and see what looks good and what doesn't look good. For now, let's just fix these little furs up. We're going to add some flyaways. Easiest way to do that is just make sure that we're on our bare layer. We're just going to go right above it, new layer in the art folder, hit B for brush, and then we're just going to use the soft round pressure size brush. Uh, we're going to use white to kind of just get these flyaways. Well, a little bit of a gray so just pick a color in there and then let's see with a flow of around actually let's increase our flow to about 27 percent and you can switch up the colors by just using your color sampler and on these last ones we're just going to go on that bare mask and just kind of have this be a little more subtle painting with black clean up the edge and I'm just going to go to that shadow and clean that shadow a little bit with our round brush. Maybe paint in a little darker. Turn that shadows into its own little group. And then maybe sometimes it helps just to reduce it a little, the opacity. One, one last thing we're going to do is create a new layer and then merge all of the layers by hitting Shift, Option, Command, E, Convert to Smart Object by right clicking. And we're just going to go to Camera Raw and do some really simple adjustments. So go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And let's see what happens if we add a little texture and then maybe some clarity. And that way it's gonna bring the fur and everything and make it look a little bit more intense. And then maybe pop our highlights. And you just wanna kinda of see what starts to work for your particular piece of art. I added a little bit of exposure. I'm just gonna hit okay. And you can see the difference. So it went from being a little bit on the blurry side and a little bit more whimsical and dreamy to something a little more solid and graphic. And the final thing is I just want to add a little bit of noise. So option and then hit the new layer, hold down option, new layer, call this noise. We'll call it noise six because we'll probably add around six. And on your mode, go down to overlay, fill with overlay neutral color, 50% gray. Make sure that's checked. Okay. Filter, noise, add noise. And we're going to add six. This is just going to kind of bring everything together and you can adjust it. And now you see the noise. So it kind of just gives it a little bit of grain. You could add even one more just to see if that's going to help. It might be a little too strong. So let's just keep one. And then of course you can put whatever type you want. There we go, guys. I just added a little bit of type. I don't know if I would actually use that. I would probably add some texture to it and make it look a little cooler, but that's a whole other tutorial. All I wanted you to kind of learn is how to add a double exposure to a bear, your pet, a wolf, a lynx, a bobcat, <laughs> you name it. So uh, if you guys made it this far, I really hope you learned something. Keep tuning in for more. We got tutorials coming that all pertain to movie poster design and fan art. So keep on watching and supporting and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.